Welcome to our lesson on how to represent solution concentration. In this lesson, we're going to look at some ways besides molarity to describe the amount of solute dissolved in a solution. So molarity is something that we've talked about already. We know that molarity equals moles over liters. And molarity is very useful and convenient for stoichiometry because it relates moles to an easily measurable quantity, volume. Unfortunately, we do run into problems with molarity when the temperature is not constant in a reaction. The reason for that is as temperature increases, generally liquids expand. So if the temperature increases, we're going to see the volume or the liters go up as well. And that's going to change our overall molarity. And mathematically, if we're increasing the denominator, this moles over liters, we're increasing the liters when temperature goes up, that means our molarity is going to go down as temperature goes up. And you'd see the opposite if the temperature went down. The molarity would go up instead. So ultimately what this means is that molarity is not going to remain constant if the temperature is not also constant. So in this lesson we're going to look at some ways to measure solution concentration that do remain constant regardless of the temperature. The first of these other ways is percent concentration. Now anytime you're dealing with percents, it's important to keep in mind that a percent, what it really means is that you have a part of something out of the whole, or part divided by the whole. And then we multiply it by 100 to make it into a percentage. But it's this part over the whole that's the important thing to always remember when trying to calculate something or deal with a quantity that's given to you in percentages. So there are a few different ways to look at a percentage in terms of solution concentration. And the first of these is percent by mass. And percent by mass can be shown as percent by mass equals the mass of the solute divided by the total mass of the solution. And then this all multiplied by 100 to make it a percentage. Now it's really important to remember that when you see something like this, total mass of solution, what that really means is the mass of the solute plus the mass of the solvent because when you dissolve one thing in another, you're combining their masses. So total mass means you're adding those two things together, the solute mass and the solvent mass. Let's take a look at how I could utilize this percent by mass information to prepare a 3.5 percent salt solution. So this would be a 3.5 percent by mass salt solution. Now if you just see percent, like I have written here, and there is no indication if it's percent by mass or percent by something else, you can usually assume that is by mass. So here we go. We're going to prepare our 3.5% salt solution. Now just as an easy example, let's say I have 100 grams of total solution. That means I need to figure out how much salt, how much NaCl, I'm going to add to water to create this total 3.5% by mass solution. So 3.5% of the total solution should be salt. Now that's easy because I just did 100 grams here. So 3.5% of 100 is just 3.5. So I know I'm going to need 3.5 grams of NaCl to make this 100 gram total solution. The question is though, how much water am I going to need to dissolve this much salt to create this 3.5% salt solution? Well, if 3.5 grams is salt and the total mass should be 100 grams, that means the difference, or 96.5 grams, should be water. So I can prepare this 100 grams of total solution, this 100 grams of this 3.5 percent salt solution, by taking 3.5 grams of sodium chloride and dissolving it in 96.5 grams of water. You should note that percent by mass is one of these quantities that is not affected by temperature. Neither one of these components, the mass of sodium chloride or the mass of the water, is going to change if the temperature changes. So we would say that percent by mass is a temperature independent measure of concentration. Now the last thing I want to mention is that you may see this information, this 3.5 percent by mass salt solution, is a convenient way of writing it to indicate very clearly that it's a percent by mass. And that looks like this. 3.5 percent parentheses w w. So this is weight divided by weight, or mass divided by mass. And this is a very common way to indicate 
that the quantity you're talking about is a percent by mass. So mass of solute over mass of solution, or weight over weight. This is in contrast to another kind of percent, that would be percent by volume. Percent by volume is mainly going to be used for liquid liquid solutions. So a solution where a liquid is dissolved in another liquid. The formula for calculating it is going to look very similar to the percent by mass. You have the volume of the solute divided by the total volume of solution times 100 to make it a percent and that is percent by volume. And similar to the way we had another notation for the percent by mass, you could also see this as percent with V over V, volume divided by volume. So percent by mass was W over W, this one is V divided by V as our indication of a percent by volume. Unlike percent by mass, percent by volume is not strictly temperature independent because different liquids can expand at different rates based on temperature. But frequently when you have liquids dissolved in liquids, you're dealing with substances that expand at pretty much the same rate. So you don't have to worry too much about the concentration changing in a percent by volume sense when the temperature changes. Here's an example of two different concentration solutions of the same substance. So in the picture on the left, we have a 70% isopropyl alcohol solution. And in the picture on the right, we have a 91% isopropyl alcohol solution. Now these percentages indicate a percent by volume. We're going to take a closer look at the 70% solution and see, as an example, how to make a 70% by volume isopropyl alcohol solution. So the easiest example we could use is a volume of 100 milliliters as our total solution volume. That means that by volume, 70% of it should be pure isopropyl alcohol. So to make this 100 milliliters of 70% solution, we're going to take 70 milliliters of pure isopropyl. And we're going to use water to dilute it down. So we want to lower it from this pure concentration. And we want a total volume of 100 milliliters. So we're going to put this into 30 milliliters of water. So now we could check this. We could calculate the percent by volume of this process. So the volume of the solute, in this case, is the 70 milliliters of isopropyl. So that's 70 milliliters divided by the total volume of solution. So the total volume of solution is going to be the 70 milliliters of pure isopropyl added to the 30 milliliters of water, giving us a total of 100 milliliters for the solution times 100 will give us a 70% by volume solution of isopropyl alcohol. So each percent concentration method is useful on its own. Percent by volume is useful for liquid-liquid solutions, and percent by mass is very useful because it doesn't change based on temperature. But there is one more thing we can look at that sort of bridges the gap between molarity's usefulness in stoichiometry and the temperature independent nature of the percent by mass. So sort of looking at the best of both worlds, we have something called molality. Now the first thing you may notice is that molality sounds very similar to molarity, which is moles over liters. But molality is definitely not molarity. So be very careful not to get them confused. Molarity is typically written with a capital M, whereas molality is going to be indicated with a italicized lowercase m. So molality is sometimes referred to the molal concentration of a solution. So you may see it as this, the molal concentration, as opposed to the molar concentration, which would be a capital M. So this molal concentration, this lowercase m, is equal to the moles of solute, so you may start to see why this is useful for stoichiometry because it relates moles as a quantity. But instead of relating it to liters like molarity did, molality is going to relate it to kilogram of solvent. So it's relating it to a mass. And as we know, mass is not going to change the temperature. That wraps up our lesson on representing solution concentrations. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.